This is episode 0012 of Gary's Glorious Golden Nuggets. Today, we are honored to have Bof and Ra with us. These people are absolutely amazing. Bof was raised in the jungles of Brazil, and Ra is from the Dutch countryside. And the two of them met at a hippie festival, and they've pretty much been together ever since. Now, they are digital entrepreneurs with a site known as Online Vagabonds. I want to welcome you both to the podcast today. Thank you so much, Gary, for having us. It's a privilege to be here. Thank you. I tell you, it's a real honor for me to have you both here. As I told you before the show, you two are such congruent, such loaded people with integrity, compassion, and a giving spirit. Absolutely generous. You, you personify what I know of this community of the online entrepreneurs. I am so pleased to have you here. And with that, I don't want your heads to explode. So I'm just going to begin with my first question. What do you wish you had known before you began this journey as online entrepreneurs? That's a really beautiful question. That's, let's see what we wish we would have known. I think for me, like if someone would have told me before we started this journey, because the beginning of the journey is a bit like uncertain and you're trying new things. But if someone would have told me that, Ra, can you imagine you're going to wake up every day feeling super excited, like as a child waking up on a birthday. And if someone would have told me that, like, I was like, that would give me a lot more like confidence in the steps that I was making at that time. And there was a lot of questions and doubts. If that would be, I think that would make a difference for me. And also realizing the, the benefits that you can give to other people. So for example, if, if someone would tell me, Ra, there's, there's so much potential in you that you can, other people can benefit from. As long as you're keeping it inside of you, there's other people that are not receiving that that would give me more sense of urgency to really take those steps now and see that I need to get my things together because there is only limited time. And if I'm not going to do it now, I'm not going to have that ripple effect around me. To me, it's like, I just wish I knew how powerful the internet is. It's quite amazing. I think a lot of people really underestimate how powerful the leverage of the internet it is just amazing. I cannot believe that we moved so far in just 10 months. I'm like, wow, it's like, it's really mind blowing. I don't even dare to think like where we're going to be like on the next 10 months from now, because it's, it's really, it's so powerful that whatever we imagine is, is not going to really match whatever is out there. So that's for me. I, I think when people first come online, they truly become amazed of all that they didn't know that existed and that it's a lot easier for the most part than they ever imagined. It's currently still one of the biggest secrets on the planet. That's amazing, isn't it? It's like, it's available for everyone, but somehow, as long as you don't go through the door, you won't be able to see all the potential that there is. And it's such a way to leverage yourself. This is a great segue because you've talked about all the great stuff that have happened on this thing. So let me ask you, what was your biggest failure that you've experienced to date? And what did you learn from it? To me, at least, the biggest failure is having given credibility to that critic inner voice within you that we all have. I mean, it's quite amazing how easy we believe that voice. To me, that was the biggest failure. It's only when I start to do some math that that helped me to, to change around. Because you think you're studying something, like for instance, in my case, economics, cryptocurrency, and what have you. And I think of all the people that know a lot more than me, and that makes me feel really small. If you just flip the coin to the other side and you say, well, let me look how many people know a lot less than me. <laughs> so <laughs> that was the biggest failure is not to have flipped that coin earlier. Same here, exactly. We talked about this as well. It's not necessarily the BS itself, the, the, the things you tell yourself that hold you back, because that might come up now and then, but it's also our approach to it and that we actually bought into it like the next level. We actually believed that critical voice. And I think that was our biggest failure. We have learned from it that mm. we can notice it mm. when it comes up and point it out and make sure that, hold on, that's not mm. constructive, transform that. It really is true that what's going on in your inner world is being reflected by what's really out there in the outer world. This whole idea of that little voice that what I like to call my little professor that thinks it knows everything 
and tells me, oh, you can't do that. You're not good enough. You're not bright enough to learn how to silence that, to allow that other voice inside that says, this is the path, follow it, do it, trust. It's all law of attraction. It's all law of attraction. It's amazing, isn't it? Very powerful. Very powerful. Thank you for sharing that. A lot of people like to say, well, I don't believe in failure, but the truth of the matter is <laughs> we're all learning because we're making mistakes and yes. you're never going to get anywhere if you don't learn from the mistake. Otherwise you're just going to repeat it, repeat it and repeat it. And that's insanity. That's true. So we, we did failures. We wouldn't rec it, like call them failures because like Napoleon Hill says, all failures are stepping stones to success. Right. But still, if you actually look in your life and you can identify them, you can also see wider stepping stones. So I, I think it's a very important, good question. Yeah. So let's have a segue from there into the, the idea is like somebody comes up to you, somebody's listening to us now and they say, well, what advice can they give me? Because I'm kind of wanting to get into this digital realm and I'm not really sure where to go or what to do, or even if I can. So what advice would you give somebody who's just kind of saying something like that around you? My greatest advice would be start doing it now. Don't leave for tomorrow and actually do the math. How many hours a day are you throwing away or not being productive, at least not productive in building yourself a better life. So I'll say, make a decision and start today, not tomorrow, not after tomorrow, not next month, but today, right now, decide to dedicate one or two hours a day, even to investigate something or to clean up your desk or set a table with a computer and sit there every day without a day off. That is like the one advice I would say, give to your future at least one or two hours a day every single day beginning now, not tomorrow, not the day after. I think the importance to give it attention if you have that wish and to align with that intention. So whatever it is, even if you don't, if you're not quite clear how it looks like, what you're going to do online, just sit with it and, and research it and ask yourself, what would I like to do? Because if it's like, we also do life coaching, for example, and we just called a friend and said, Hey, we would like to test life coaching. Are you interested? And we started, you know, without, and, and at the same time we started education as well. So in that way, you become more aligned with where you want to go. And if you start doing that in your everyday life, it's moving there step by step. So even though it's not quite clear, start, start now. And continue nonstop. I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. Again, it's law of attraction stuff, isn't it? It's all about what is it that you want? Mm -hmm. and how much do you want it and the how you do it just kind of materializes it's almost like walking into a dark room if you just wait a few moments your eyes will adjust and you'll be able to see the next few steps safely or at least where the light switch is wow that's a beautiful analogy i like that yeah, yeah. another thing that i think we can add here is like Take some amount of financial incentive, take 50 mm -hmm. euros a day, 50 euros a month, okay, throw away more than 50 euros in trash every month, buying a croissant here, a little coffee there, a little snack here, this magazine that you bought and you're never going to read it. You, you put all those th things together, it would easily add to more than 50 euros a month. So besides the one, two hours a day, make a point of putting 50 euros a month to invest in yourself, that be buying a better book, getting an education online, whatever, like take some action today. No one can come to me and say, I cannot afford 50 euros a month. If you cannot afford 50 euros, take 20 euros, but start to invest in yourself today. And that makes a great segue because what are the resources that you have found that have assisted you the most along this journey, being digital online entrepreneurs? The best resource or resources for us in our journey has been a community and the support from other people and having the connection with other people that's because it works on so many different levels you don't feel like alone and you have to figure out everything yourself so it gives a lot of support in that and every person has so much value to give on so many different areas it opens so many more doors so that has been it's been supportive but also like if you don't know where to go for information or tools it speeds up the process like 
tenfold. Otherwise, you have to figure out everything by yourself. It's like in the weekly meetings, sometimes someone mentions a resource or a software that they're using. And for us, some of those have really changed the way we work. And a lot it's become a lot more effective. And it's only because we have a community of online entrepreneurs. I would say I understand the, the, the place of the community. Mm -hmm. Like, what you mean, there has been two things. Like, one thing that we forget to give credit for is the internet itself, the technology. Like, it's amazing how today people walk having in their pockets more computational power than NASA had when put the first man on the moon. I mean, <laughs> that was just, <laughs> just so amazing <laughs> that I see those kids, like, literally at the age of eight, 10, and they have no clue <laughs> what potential powerful tool they have in their pockets. <laughs> That to me is, of course, the base of all the resources that allows us to go to a platform and have a community. To me, that's one thing that people need to realize that like, no matter how much resource you think you don't have, you're walking with NASA on your pocket. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> that is brilliant. I tell you, one of the things that was really quite shocking to me in the 90s, they were talking about the space shuttle. It was like a Commodore 64 or an Atari computer was what they ran the entire space shuttle with. And I was there like, you've got to be kidding. I can't believe it. You don't need much computational power to leverage yourself is what it proves. And here we are, you're in a community because a lot of people walk into the digital world and they say, oh, I can just be left alone now. They are truly solo entrepreneurs. And the successful ones learn, I can't be a solo entrepreneur. I have to be an entrepreneur and I have to leverage myself. And part of leveraging myself is getting involved with really good people who know more than me or who can support me or who can encourage me. And I can move on because the solo entrepreneur, there's some that are successful. Most of them drop by the wayside because they can't do it. It's not just someone knows more than you. Everyone, no matter in what level they are, they know something that you don't and that makes a huge difference like we can be in this community and this world for 10 years and i can guarantee you if a new kid comes in just a week into this world if you talk to that kid you will find out something that you do not know it's absolutely true it's absolutely true who would you consider the three people three sources three whatever that have helped you the most along your way for me, that's always, it's been Woof, very much so. He's incredible support and wisdom and the determ determination is something that I'm learning a lot from Woof, persistence and patience. Somehow in, in our relationship together, we did a ritual where you plant a seed and you watch it grow every day. Really powerful because <laughs> if you actually pay attention to it, you see it grow. And if you forget about it, you don't necessarily see all the changes that are happening. And I also noticed my approach, like, oh, I want it to grow like this. Like, oh, you have to move faster. Like, this is how I approach myself sometimes, but you're not going to say that to a plant, right? Mm -hmm. So it takes its own time. So that's like, I'm learning a lot from, from Boof. He's, he's, he's very important in that process. There's also another person that is very inspiring to me. And she's a, a life coach, Christine Hessler. And I'm listening to her podcasts a lot. She's, it's very... Because I'm also on a journey of becoming a, a life coach and her way, her approach has given me a lot of insights uh, that's been really meaningful to me. I don't know quite sure where it's going to lead up to, but that's been very influential. And, and to me, like the most incredible person in my journey is definitely Ra. I really love the way we complement each other because I cannot really get to a software and figure my way around that software which is something I can do with low tech tools. Like I can take a tool and anything that I can grab with my hands that are tangible, I can figure my way around very easily. But when it comes to technology and click here, drag there, I'm not that savvy and I'm not, not very good at it, but Rise, she can do 20 different things on, on, online, like editing and it's, it's just awesome. Like it blows my mind. So to me, it's like, sometimes I just see myself hypnotized by watching over her shoulder on the computer, how she can get a lot of things done. So she is definitely like super. And also the way she can organize thoughts and put a track on them. I'm, I'm not that well with those things. Now, when it comes to understanding abstract things as money and magic and different concepts of reality, 
and psychology, I can really grasp that, like what is the abstract part of a cryptocurrency and the problem trying to solve those things to me, to me comes really easy. So Rise is definitely the one person that uh, is the most significant in, my, in our journey, on online journey at least. And then I have two other people that are really important to me. And one of them is myself after I die. I'm really inspired by how am I going to be remembered after I die, like by the impact I have on people's lives. So that person that is there, like after my death, that's something that really pulls me towards giving my best on, on every day. The other ones are, I live a life with this my ancestors behind me over my shoulder. So everything I do and say, I see all my ancestors looking to me over my shoulder. So I dare not to say or do something that I would feel embarrassed to do in front of them. So those are like the, the personas that really have a huge impact on how I live my life today. All of that information is really powerful. I believe it gave a lot of gold to people who were just listening in because frankly, we live in a world and a society where people think they're actually alone. There's nothing there. And yet we, you're constantly surrounded. If you'll just look, it's all available to you. What is the most common myth about this career path you would love to debunk? To me, that's uh, going to sound like a little cliche and it's the easiest one is like, they believe that you don't have enough value in you to share with the world. That is the most ridiculous, and I'm sorry for the word ridiculous, uh, but it, it's just ridiculous how we buy into that idea. This is to me like the greatest illusion. I mean, no matter who you are, you are an adult and you live in this world and your experience adds value to other people's life. I mean, period. I see people who are just fixing their bikes and who have a channel on YouTube and they're making tons of money, just sharing that little thing that you would think has absolutely no value. I see people making videos, how to cook spaghetti. I mean, I, I, if you are alive and you know how to do something, you have value <laughs> to share, period. <laughs> there was one girl who was actually reading on YouTube and she would film herself reading and people were watching that because it's so calming. <laughs> like you can, you can literally just do that. Yes. There's so much, I think another myth is, or maybe I, I had that, like I believe in that myth in the beginning, but that you have to have it all figured out before you start. Like, no, I can't, you know, make that step. I first need a business plan or a budget, or I need to know exactly what I'm going to do or how it's going to look like before I actually begin. And I think that's, I think it's, it's the journey. Like if you take a step and every time you recenter and get back to what is important to you and you meditate and every time it gets clearer and it's, it's along these steps that the process is already happening. It's not like I'm already mm -hmm. need to have everything figured out now. So mm -hmm. I think that's another myth. Yeah. I, I think a lot of people would say, oh, so you don't really have to have everything already. You can start now because I, I know people sit there and say, okay, well, first I have to have my website. Mm -hmm. Then I have to have all of my programs in line. And then I have to have this and, you know, and I have to be blogging. I have to have blogs all out. And when you talk to the people who are really doing it, the people who are really successful, none of them had that. None of them had that, <laughs> but they learned it along the way. Exactly. If you could step into my shoes and you thought to yourself, I really wish Gary would ask me this question. What would that question be? In my case is it's very easy because like there's one moment in my life, which is like, is the moment that I carry with me. So I would ask, what is the lowest financial point in your life? Because a lot of people may think, oh, we start all this and we had it all figured out. Our parents had money. We all like come from financially privileged backgrounds. But what I would wish you had asked me, what, what is my lowest financial point? Because when I give uh, financial education courses and when I introduce myself to people giving them financial advice, I tell them, I was a street bum. Okay. I lived on the streets and not just live on the streets. So one day I was without eating for three days. I could do well in the jungle, but when you put me in the, in the city, that was like a whole different ball game. But I remember there was one point where I was hungry for three days, but because I was clean and I was walking relatively clean, 
a beggar asked me for some money for a hot dog and I told him I I don't have any money and he started to insult me because he believed I had the means to help him with the, with the hot dog. I sat next to him on the sidewalk on the floor for about 15, 20 minutes telling him my reality. He looked at the hot dog stand and said, brother, give me two hot dogs, one for me, one for this guy. So that's my lowest point. I was like less than a beggar. A beggar had to give me a hot dog. So. That is one question that I wish you had asked, like, what was my lowest financial point? And every time I make money in my life, every time in one day, like it happened uh, in the past month, like in one single day, Ryan, I could make like 1500 euros. Every time I make like a nice chunk of money, I remember that moment. I remember that I came from a point where a beggar had to give me some, something to eat after two days, like a, a hot dog. So, and that same beggar, the same night, I had to go and sleep with him because it was a winter night and I slept like three or four days with him in an abandoned building. So that's where I came from. And to see where I am now, that's to me like, I think would be a golden nugget for your people to see that it is possible no matter how low you are. That's a real powerful story, both. So Ra, same question. What question should I have asked you? I think a question that I would ask online entrepreneurs would be why? Like, why do you choose to go this way? You know, why don't you just go for a job with certainty and retirement and social benefits and, you know, you'll be taken care of and you know what is expected of you. Why do you chase this, chose this route of having to figure everything out and not, not having clarity or, or security? Like, I think, I think that's, I find very interesting. And for me, I guess it's been uh, a question I ask myself quite a bit also because I went to art academy and I always chose to focus on my, on my art, even though I don't know <laughs> what's going to happen from it. Or every time I was just going back to what is important to me and what steps do I need to take to stay in line with that and really trusting that whatever is going to come from that is going to be okay. But yeah, I think that will be a question. <laughs> I think there's a lot of people who found that by stepping into the corporate world, having that sense of security discovered in the age of COVID that they neither had security or a job. And that's just the reality of our world. You guys are so interesting. You guys are so amazing and you have such great stories and so much wisdom to share. If somebody was just driving down the street right now and said, how do I get in touch with these people? I'd, I'd like to know more. What's the best way to get in touch? I think, yeah, anyway, like we're, we're have a website and we are on social media platforms. So our website is onlinevagabonds.com and you can send us an email on info at online vagabonds. But we're also on Instagram, so you can drop us a message there. And we're also on YouTube, of course, where we share educational videos on like finance and personal growth, spirituality and inspirational videos. And we're also on Facebook. So those are all the ways that you can yeah. contact us. And you're known as online vagabonds. Yes, yeah. that's it. Online okay. vagabonds everywhere. Okay. Now there's people all around the world who are pulling over to the side of the road, trying to look for a pen and paper. <laughs> it will be in the show notes, yeah. folks. It will be in the show notes. Just just look in the show notes, continue driving, be safe. <laughs> we'll take care of that. Okay. Now this is the highlight for me. I give you two uninterrupted minutes to tell the world anything you would like to say. Now I've got two of you here and I don't know if you want to share that two minutes or you want your own two minutes. I am just going to let you go uninterrupted and tell the world what's in your heart. Thank you. I think going like for both of us, I think we wanted to mention really thank you and express our gratitude and also the importance of expressing and feeling gratitude on a daily basis. And I think what is really how we do that in our lives is when we wake up in the morning and we realize we are alive, <laughs> right? You open your eyes in the morning and you can breathe and you can feel your skin and you can smell each other in the morning and you realize you woke up alive again in the morning and we really celebrate that and we think wow sometimes it's really like enthusiastic wow we woke up alive again today we did it because that realization 
that we have another day to to be here and we can feel the wind on our skin and we can have contact with people and we can have a positive impact on other people i think that's a really that's really something precious that we that we share yes. and uh, the one message we can leave on those minutes is gratitude just just be grateful and not just grateful in the sense of of us celebrating that we woke up alive but decide to do something on that day start to use the resources the time that you have mm. so i'll actually actually also express this gratitude in action mm -hmm. i mean take an hour day and do something productive towards your life i mean you have been given another 24 hours take two hours of that day and express a gratitude in an active manner like doing something constructive to improve your life and the world around you and your room and your house and that will ripple well, exactly. I think that's that's something that it doesn't. You don't have to look very far. You know, you can already like look inside you or just look around you. Like what is around you that now you can make better, or you can fix, or you can just do it a little bit better. You know, or just a little bit, you know, or a compliment for someone, or you can ask someone what you can do for them, or just take some time or attention. Out of the 84,000 seconds you have every day, take some time to be grateful. It's really powerful. You guys have just been absolutely lovely. I've enjoyed spending time with you today and I thank you for participating. And folks, this is, this is what it's like to be a digital online entrepreneur. If you're interested, contact them. They can tell you more about it. This is Gary Jenkins thanking Wolf and Raw for participating today, and this will conclude our episode of Gary's Glorious Golden Nuggets. Kindly subscribe, share this video, share this podcast to somebody you know that would benefit from it. Thank you.